phage therapy or viral phage therapy provides a possible alternative treatment to bacterial infections in using antibiotics, especially as bacterial infections are becoming resistant to traditional antibiotics. So what is phage therapy? How does it work? And are there any issues with phage therapy? Well, viruses work by latching onto a cell. This can be any type of cell, ranging from human cells, animal cells, or even those bacterial cells that cause infections. Once the virus has become attached to the cell and injects the viral genetic material into the cell, that genetic material then uses the cell's own mechanisms to replicate the genetic material, and after that it adds on the other components to make up the whole virus. Once enough copies of the virus have been created, the new copies need to exit the cell. They normally do by bursting through the cell wall, normally killing the cell in the process. This method of virus reproduction is normally what makes them so dangerous as they can use the activity of human cells to damage the body as a whole. However, viruses are also rather specific or specialised in that each virus likes to use a specific cell in order to reproduce. And viruses can't reproduce without having a host cell to do this work for them. This means that if you can find a type of virus or even several viruses that won't use human cells to their replicating, but we use the bacterial cells which say cause tuberculosis or TB to do their replicating, you could potentially have a method of targeting a TB infection by having little or no impact on the host. However, there are of course some problems. First of which is the advantage in the specific nature and the way the virus targets the cells which it wants to hijack can also be a disadvantage. So a slightly different strain of the bacterial infection won't be suitable for the virus to hijack. The virus will kind of ignore it as a potential target. So in order to cure a bacterial infection, maybe three or more viruses be used together in a kind of cocktail to tackle the infection. Next issue is the bacteria, of course, are constantly evolving and changing themselves. So just like bacteria can develop resistance to antibiotics, they can also evolve to be virus resistant or change their structure so they're no longer recognised by the virus. Then, of course, the viruses can also change or be altered to beat the change in the bacteria. Then there's the issue of activity. Unlike the human body's own antibacterial defence mechanisms, the virus is a bit more like opportunist predators will latch onto the appropriate cell if it wanders past them. They don't really go out seeking the bacterial cells. I mean that while the virus will kill a lot of the bacterial cells, they won't necessarily get all of them. However, the advantage the virus has is that you actually don't need to use that many of them to fight an infection, since the target bacteria cells themselves are being used to create more viruses. In addition, there's minimal impact on other cells in the body, both in terms of the normal human cells and the other foreign but useful cells in our body, like the bacteria in our digestive tract. Those remain unaffected by the destroying activity of these viruses. There is an issue where the action of destroying the bacterial cells may in turn release toxic chemicals from within the bacteria cells and putting those into the body, resulting in a fever. However, is generally going to be a minor issue compared to leaving the bacterial infection untreated.